Hi. Before I proceed, I hope everyone is safe and doing fine and are already well adjusted with our new current sit pandemic situation. Okay, so let me just give a brief intro of myself and then I'll proceed with my topic. I am Marvin Cruz, currently working for Trend Micro here in their R&D center in Taipei, Taiwan. My main job is to monitor emerging cyber threats and find out latest attackers, modus operandi. Basically, I'm like a weatherman surveying the, the horizon of any, for any emerging threat that Trend Micro needs to deal with. Uh, all right, enough of me. Let me proceed with my ransomware talk. On my agenda is a very quick primer for what is ransomware for the benefit of those who are not so familiar with it. Then a brief history of the ransomware threat, its evolution, significant improvements in the past couple of years. This I hope should put everyone on the same page and prepare you guys on the meat of my talk the state of ransomware 2020. I'll also cover appropriate response to this threat given the latest information we have. Okay, so what is a ransomware? Ransomware is a kind of malware that encrypts victims files. The attacker then demands a ransom from the victim to restore access to the files upon payment. In other words, asking the victims to pay ransom for their files, hence the name ransomware. Victims are shown instructions for how to pay a fee to get the decryption key. The cost can range from a few hundred dollars to thousands at most, payable to cyber criminals usually using Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency like Monero. For an ordinary user with few important files, the loss may be not that significant. Perhaps some pictures you haven't uploaded in Facebook are lost. However, on enterprise environment, it is a totally different story. The attacker might only sought for, let us say, 1,000 USD ransom, but the other costs like uh, financial loss due to business interruption, cost of recovery and cleanup of your network, damage on your brand identity, and possible regulatory investigations that could result to fines and penalties. You, you may wonder how one got infected in the first place. One of the most common delivery system is through mal spam. That is an email with ransomware or a ransomware downloader as an attachment. Through social engineering, those ransomware attachments are opened and got its chance to encrypt the user's files. Some other like, for example, the no patch ransomware take advantage of vulnerabilities in victims' computers, hence does not need to trick users. Okay, so that's uh, basically a ransomware. Let's move on on the uh, quick history of uh, this ransomware. 2013, uh, CryptoLocker was one of the first ransomware to gain popularity, mainly because it was distributed by the powerful sales botnet. 2015, Tesla Crypt targeted gameplay data for specific computer games, like for example, Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Minecraft. Hmm. Lucky is ransomware malware that was released in 2016. 2016, it was delivered by email with an attached Microsoft Word document that contains malicious macros. I think this ransomware is the epitome of the shotgun approach of distributing ransomware. On that, on the same year, uh, 
Petya ransomware impacts the MBR, making recovery a bit complicated. This is one notable innovation on attacker's part. Then a few months later, a new variant of Petya was used for a global cyber attack, primarily targeting Ukraine. The new variant propagates via the infamous Eternal Blue exploit. Jigsaw ransomware follows Petya, Petya's idea of infecting MBR and a twist on its ransom demand, which if not paid within an hour, a pile of victims' data will be deleted and so on. On that same year, a powerware ransomware pioneered the use of PowerShell. Another innovation during that time, but nowadays PowerShell is now considered a commodity commodity tool in most cyber attacks. 2017, WannaCry, the most famous of them all, which affected more than 200,000 200, computers across 150 countries. 2018, Ryuk ransomware impacts a lot of enterprise environments. This is the time that the ransomware actors shifted their focus from ordinary users to enterprise victims. The mode, of, the mode of distribution though is still via spam email through the use of Emotet botnet network. Normally the trick bot in Postiller is also identified on host victims environment before the actual ransomware attack. And later part of 2019, Maze Ransomware pioneered the use of pay or we will publish tactic to coerce victims to pay the ransom. Well, we'll talk on this one later, more on this one later. On that same year, Grand Crab, yeah, Grand Crab Ransomware, which is responsible, responsible for a majority of infections globally was retired. However, apparently connected to Grand Crab authors, a new ransomware group, Sodinokibi, emerged. And together with Ryu, dominated the ransomware landscape. They are just some of the notables. My point here is there are a lot of active threat actors out there. They are very creative and still continuously innovating their creation. Okay, let us now tackle year 2020, the meat of my presentation. What are the significant changes this year that everybody, everybody, everyone needs to know? First significant change, targeted attack. In the past couple of years, a shotgun approach is the preferred method of distributing ransomware basically to impact as many victims as they can is the attacker's objective. Normally, this is done by sending a lot of spam emails laced with ransomware. Another approach, as I told you earlier, is to exploit vulnerabilities that, that could affect a lot of machines. For example, using the infamous eternal blue exploits that affects Microsoft operating system. On the contrary, this year, 2010, 2020, a complete shift in their modus operandi. We are now seeing a lot of ransomware groups doing targeted attacks to specific company or industry. In particular, the healthcare industry. For example, Q2 this year, the Interpol issued the warning to healthcare institution as they are the target of this ransomware groups. Uh, this is really disturbing given that we are in the midst of COVID pandemic and the attackers are busy targeting our hospitals. Another significant change this year in ransomware's modus operandi is that they are now more coercive in getting payment. I call this pay or we will publish tactic. This is done by collecting and stealing sensitive data before encrypting files with ransomware 
and then publishing the stolen data in chunks until the victims are coerced and pay the ransom. For businesses, this would certainly damage their reputation, lose advantage on any trade secrets that this data may contain, and possibly be, sub be a subject to several litigations and penalties. Think of GDPR and several privacy laws in the countries these businesses operate. Just like what I mentioned, the healthcare industry is one of the targets. Here's, here's a screenshot from an infected hospital where the threat of non-payment would result in massive disclosure of patient data. Another example, apparently our e-bill ransomware group dumped the files of American passion company Kenneth Cole it provided download link with some information about employees and financial information, claiming to have 60,000 personal data and 70,000 financial and work documents. This pay or we will publish tactic was started by Maze Ransomware late 2019 and was soon adopted by Sodino Kibi NMT and other ransomware groups this year. Another significant change this year is calibrated or negotiated pricing of ransom. Few years ago, ransom price is fixed and used to be in the range of several hundred dollars up to few thousands the most. One just need to follow attacker's instruction in the ransomware note, transfer his payment to attacker's, attacker's chosen Bitcoin address, and then you're done, or should I say your money's gone. No negotiation. But this year, negotiation is the de facto standard. So how is the typical ransom pricing negotiation nowadays? In one article by our Sophos friends, Mace Ransomware, uh, Mace Ransomware criminals were demanding several million US dollars for ransom, with the crooks opening the bidding at 10 million USD. Another example, very recently, the company Garmin admitted that they are victim of a cyber attack Apparently, they were hit by wasted locker ransomware. Ransom demand for wasted locker infections are steep, generally ranging from 500,000 to 10 million in cryptocurrency. Here, victims are essentially paying hush money for the crooks to keep quiet about the data breach aspect of the attack, as well as paying to get their business, business running again. Actually, it's not hard to imagine what brought this change. As I already mentioned, ransomware threat actors have an idea of the files or data that they had stolen and encrypted, and obviously have an idea of its worth. Also, since the victims are business entities with deep pockets, it's no wonder why they are doing negotiated pricing and with an astonishing price. Another change in attacker's mode of operation this year, use of compromise accounts. Several ransomware cases now involve compromise account credentials to gain initial foothold on the target company. Account compromise are mainly achieved through phishing, in other cases, uh, stolen accounts are due to initial infostealer infection. For example, cases of trickbot infection will be followed with Ryuk ransomware or 3 decks then followed with Doppelpainer ransomware. In addition, RDP is also known initial entry point of ransomware attacks. Credentials can be achieved by a brute force method. It was observed that networks contain artifacts indicating 
RDP brute force prior to attack. Also, it is widely known that RDP credentials can be purchased in the underground, underground like the XDEDIC market. Now, after establishing initial access, the success of attacks relies on whether ransomware threat actors can manage to gain control over domain accounts with elevated privileges. For that to happen, attackers utilize various methods to gain access to privileged accounts, including common credential tap tools like Mimikatz. Attackers might also use LSA Secrets View or a similar tool to access credentials stored in the LSA Secrets portion of the Windows registry. Accessible to local admins, this portion of the registry can reveal credentials for domain accounts used to run uh, scheduled tasks and services. Uh, another important improvement in tactics this year, ransomware threat actors are actively disabling security products before the actual ransomware infection. They are using known third-party power tools to do that. Examples are Process Explorer, Process Hacker, IOBit Unlocker, etc. The rationale is obvious. It is to avoid interference with the upcoming en encryption activities. Disabling security products can take the form of uh, killing security software or event lagging processes deleting registry keys so that the programs do not run or start at runtime, or other methods to interfere with the security scan or event reporting. The tactic to disable antivirus protection first and then deploy ransomware are particularly successful in cases where one attackers already have domain admin, admin privilege which attackers normally are able to achieve to security products. Security products tamper protection is up and three, antivirus software is not properly managed or is not in a healthy state. Finally, I just want to brought this up. I know in the past, there are cases where Trend Micro were able to provide decryption tools to pre-victims ransom files. Those were the days where attackers made some mistakes or bugs in their creation that we could exploit, or they are implementing the encryption routine wrong, or they are using a weak encryption algorithm, allowing us to devise a decryptor program. Well, uh, those days are gone. Now, if one got infected with the ransomware, it is almost certain that the only way to get your files back is if you have backups or perhaps if you pay the ransom. I'll discuss more on this issue. Now, on the second part of my talk, I would like to discuss on what are the appropriate response given these re recent changes in ransomware threats. I'm more on the prevention is better than cure attitude, attitude in terms of security. I know there are, there are a lot of recommendations out there, but here are three things you could do that could address around 80% of the problem. Yeah. Pareto principle is also at work here. 80% of your security problems comes from 20% of the causes. Response number one, secure your employees from phishing emails. Phishing emails are a serious threat to businesses. They are responsible for 94% of ransomware cases according to one estimate. Now, the question is, would your employees fall for a phishing scam? Yes, they are. 
humans are always part of the security chain and normally we humans are the weakest link so educating your educating your employees on how to spot phishing would certainly help in your defense my recommendation is to do a regular phishing simulation in your company this is generally easy to do as there there are already tools out there that could help you out so why not give it a try response number two enable multi-factor authentication multi-factor authentication could drastically reduce the incidence of compromised account because the victim's password would no longer be enough to give an attacker to the attacker access to their information uh, phone based authentication is currently quite easy to set up you you only need to install authenticator app and enable two-factor authentication on the service you are using and you are done however this is not a foolproof solution as advanced advancement in phishing like the use of evil jinx 2 that tries to circumvent this solution what i do recommend for those who really need security i'm looking at you domain administrator is using hardware authentication device like for example yubikeys uh, you pay a little price on this one uh, last time i checked it was uh, 27 us dollar actually but it's a small price to pay compared to the benefits of not dealing with the major ransomware incident and finally number three secure your rdp there are a lot of things to do to secure rdp again let us use pareto principle and focus on those that matters a lot uh, surface reduction first close rdp port 3389 if not in use or after use to make sure non-authorized users are and outsiders cannot easily have an entry point of attack restrict rdp network admin access to a specific list of authorized users depending on depending on your version of windows you can configure this via the control panel settings or a group policy if there's a need to directly connect the server to the internet set up a remote desktop gateway rd gateway to enable a single point of entry instead of specific rd ports for each server attack prevention uh, update patches for the rdp client and the server side to prevent vulnerability vulnerabilities from being exploited and limit the number of failed login attempts to keep unauthorized logins in check. On the other side, let us uh, discuss two items that an executive or business owners may need to think about regarding ransomware threats. If you are not aware, there are already for quite some time now several insurance companies underwriting for cyber attacks like ransomware i think it should be part of one's arsenal in managing risk especially true if your business has reliance on computer systems which significantly increase companies vulnerability to cyber security threats as you all know, our world is in a stage where we already assume that there is no 100% security against these threats. Cyber attacks is not a matter of whether it will happen, but rather when it will happen. The appropriate mindset is to ask how to manage this threat and how to properly respond in the event of attack. Given the cost of a ransomware attack, both tangible and intangible, it is quite prudent to consider the options of having an insurance. In addition, insurance companies could also give you a second opinion on your 
security posture and help find those security gaps that your security team might have missed. Okay, on the unfortunate event of a successful ransomware attack, the proper response is not to panic, not to pay the ransom, and call the police. But if you decide, if you decided to pay the ransom, you may want to consider these three things first. Number one, paying a ransom does not guarantee that your company will not be targeted again. We've already seen cases where a victim got infected multiple times and ransom payment is like an advertisement for criminals that you are the type who pays and would like you to be part of their repeat customers. Number two, criminals do not always honor their end of the bargain. It's not like you could sue them in court if they did not provide the decryption keys. And even if they provide a decryption tool, there may be bugs or other issues. Be forewarned, their customer support operations is not known for efficiency. And finally, number three, it also encourages threat actors to target more victims and offer incentives for others to get involved in this type of malicious activity. So I beg you, please do not provide additional funding to these illegal activities. Okay, last two slides for me. I hope you guys learned something in my talk. And so key takeaways, nowadays ransomware threats are more targeted and more costly. Prevention is way better than cure with regards to ransomware infection. So securing your RDP, enabling multi-factor authentication, phishing simulation, and cybersecurity insurance would help a lot in your defense. In the event of attack, do not panic, do not pay, call the police. And with that, thanks a lot for listening. Feel free to ask questions if you have any. Thank you. Bye.